We want a more rule. We want to know how to calculate the normal force due to the fins and the position of the aerodynamic center of the fins. There are a couple of references. I'm going to use the one in the book called Missile Design and Systems Engineering, I think. It's a nice book. I've used it. Um, yeah, a couple of chapters, I, I, I found them quite interesting. Um, the aerodynamic, I think it's chapter 3 or 2. All the aerodynamics, I'm going to explain this. these video series are going to be the one, uh, going to be the ones that appear in this book from Fleeman. Gene Fleeman. Great guy. Um... Yeah, we've, we've crossed a couple of emails. He's a great guy, solves doubts, and yeah, very experienced in this field. Um, there are better. When I talk about aerodynamic models, I talk about how to predict these. Okay, well, not exactly. Let's put properly the, the normal force coefficient and the aerodynamic center of every part. Okay, the models in this book they're pretty simple. They might look uh, complex to you at first, but uh, believe me, they're pretty simple. If you look into uh, more elaborate uh, models, well, yeah, Open Rockets model surprisingly is, is pretty pretty good. Uh, they don't need to be so. In my opinion is that they, they don't really need to be so so accurate because yeah, the uncertainty caused by other stuff. It's just way too big to, you know, and then uh, for it to actually matter. Um, but yeah, so I mean, you have really big uncertainties in, in wind, on weights, and in mold rockets. Well, yeah, you have so many uncertainties. So, but still, they implement a really, <laughs> a surprisingly complex aerodynamic model. You can take a look at it. Um, I think if if you look. If you search in Google something like technical uh, technical thesis or the if you search thesis in the open rocket you'll see a PDF of a couple hundred pages which explains yeah the models they, they use in open rocket and the aerodynamic model is pretty pretty complex and um, better than the one in, surprisingly uh, the one Fleeman explains well this is this is a systems engineering book so it isn't it isn't aerodynamics oh well uh, I'm, I'm getting getting out of track but again I'm going to base all the aerodynamics on missile design and systems engineering because so for this analytical analysis it's more than enough um, yeah this is going to be more precise probably um, I'm not sure, but if you want to go super precise, by the way, without going to CFD, CFD would be down here. But yeah, you, you can't do like analytical analysis or anything like that, or just uh, preliminary design with CFD it is validation. But if you want to go in between, um, there's a datcom. This is what the U.S. Army uses to uh, for preliminary designs of yeah, missiles and stuff. Uh, there's a missile that come on the dot com. Um, but for most uses, this is more than enough. So I'm going to use only this. And plus, we're gonna we're already you're gonna see we're we're gonna do a lot of simplifications to do an analytical analysis on the stability of the rocket. So. I'm going to say with Fleeman's aerodynamic model. Okay. Okay, back to what this video was about. We want to model the normal force coefficient 
and the aerodynamic center of the fins. So here it goes. Normal force coefficient. This is directly from Fleeman. Oh, I'll tell you now um, before it's too late, because this has induced. Uh, this has induced me a lot of errors. Fleeman uses imperial units. Be careful. Uh, so you may have to in. In, in, in some in some equations, not in this equation, but in some equations, you have to look if you know uh, if some factor is dimensionless or not. This factor is, is you can see is dimensionless, so we don't have to worry about this. But some aren't. Be super careful with that. It uses like psi and slug and yeah, you have to look look carefully in that. Okay, back to what we were saying. So, double force coefficient of fins. I'm going to explain what this is. And then, well, the sine of alpha times cosine of alpha. Absolute um, value plus two times sine squared of alpha times this and that. I'm going to explain what this is. This is the aspect ratio. Of the fins. And it is defined. As the span. Squared. Divided by. Surface. Of the fins. Okay. What is the span? Careful on this one again, as well, because um, depending on the literature, they they define it like different ways. Span. This is a semi-span. Okay, so the span will be the sum of these two. And the the area of the surface. Well, this leads to a lot of confusions, and I think Fleeman explains it pretty badly in his book. Um, it led me to yeah to a lot of confusions, especially if you have three or four fins. This is going to change. It's not intuitive. So I'm going to tell you now. This the the area of the surface is is just the sum of these two areas. Okay. Um, not both sides of the of the fin, so it's not like this area times two. It's just this pl this yeah planar surface. So this will be s surface divided by two. So the s surface will be this plus this. This is not the same with three with three fins. Uh, I'm not going to talk about three fins. If you, if you're interested in in, um, in design a rocket with three fins, which I would recommend, because unless you have um, span constraints, well, you have to do some. You'll have to do some research, uh, or maybe if I'm feeling generous, I'm going to talk about it. But for now, I'm only going. I'm only going to discuss a four fin rocket okay because if not the aspect ratio changes the def definition of of the this changes as well um, not really intuitive for the analytical this again this is an analytical analysis for the analytical analysis of stability we're going to use a four fin rocket it's the results are going to be the same um, not numerically, but uh, practically, yeah, it's they're going to be practically the same for for three fin rocket. But for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to take four fin rocket, in which the uh, these parameters are defined in the way I just draw, I just drew before. 
Okay, and this again is the the reference area of the rocket. We discussed that before. And this is a this is let's see. All right, so this equation is valid only when Mac the Mac number is smaller than the square root of one plus I think it's yeah eight times pi and this is the aspect ratio. Yeah, I think this is this. Okay, this is only valid when flying at Mach numbers below this. Okay. What happens when we have Mach numbers above this uh, Mach, limit Mach number? Well, we have another expression. Okay. And it changes slightly. We're going to have this now. This is Mach number squared at the power minus 2.5 as 2 0.5, sorry. Plus 2 sine squared alpha. All right. So this is Mach number above this. So, when we're flying at Mach numbers above this limit Mach number, our fins are gonna are gonna um, do way less restoring moment. Okay. So we have to be very careful with that. Actually, um, we're gonna see what this what this function look, look looks like. It it actually isn't so bad as it seems. It's practically linear. Um, with um, with let's say um, tangent uh, slope, this okay. Um, I plotted it for you. Yeah, this is this one. So the blue line is this function, the function C N F. In function of alpha from 0 degrees to 15 degrees. If you're flying over 15 degrees, bad news for you. You're probably your fins are probably gonna stall. So yeah, you usually don't don't get such high such high angles angles of attack. Um, you can de destabilize the rocket at those angles of attack. That, that's why I'm only plotting from 0 to 15 degrees. So it's it's practically linear. If you compare it with um, with a line with the same with the well, it has the same derivative at at angle of attack zero. So oh, by the way, I used an aspect ratio of two, which is let's say pretty yeah in the range of a common common fence. Okay, so this is practically a line. It slightly has a little bit more normal force, but yeah. So what about the position of the aerodynamic center? Oh, I'm not going to use... Well, the aerodynamic center of the fins are oh. the distance from the nose tip to the root of the fins. So we have the nose tip here, the fins here. This is this is the distance. This is this distance I'm talking about. This is the root of the fins. This is the boat tail. Okay. Plus the mean aerodynamic cord of the fins then times the aspect ratio max squared minus 1 power 0 0.5 minus 0 0.7 and then downstairs we yeah, have this Minus 
one. Okay. What this means is basically that the aerodynamic center is at this distance plus this distance here. And this distance here is practically 0 0.5 the uh, mean aerodynamic chord. So more or less zero, more or less at a quarter here. Okay. More or less for subsonic. Subsonic flying speeds. And as you increase Mach, it's going to gradually move back until more or less half of the mean aerodynamic chord. Okay. Supersonic. 